But today I want to talk about an examination in the office that is really important for anybody that's dealing with POTS, migraine, gastrointestinal problems, right? This is kind of a common sequence that we see together. But I think what will surprise you is, is what we found. So I'm just going to pull up this graph and I'm going to walk you through it, okay? This is looking at the middle cerebral artery Doppler ultrasounds. You want to just look real quickly at these numbers here. This is the left middle cerebral artery and this is the right middle cerebral artery. And then these are three different times. So the first one here is just like sitting neutral position. And you'll see that in the left middle cerebral artery, you see how you have all these waves. Each one of these is a heartbeat. And that heartbeat is going to, the bigger the waves are, the more blood is flowing through it if we just keep it simple. If you look at the left one versus the right one, you can see the left one is a lot smaller, 28 centimeters per second versus the right, which is 51 centimeters per second. Hang with me for this because it's important. So this is her just like hanging out sitting up normal. What we caught here was that you can see, you see this waveform here, how it's small, and then all of a sudden it goes big. What this is, is actually when we have her tip her head back. When she tips her head back, you see this huge expansion of the amount of blood that's going into her head. I mean, this is amazing. It's brilliant. So we see that we actually get this normalization between the two sides. So a lot of times you look at this and say, well, maybe you just got the probe in the wrong spot. But as you can see, when you extend her head, pitch her head back, we actually allow that blood flow to go into the head. And then you can see here when she returns back into kind of a normal posture again, down here in the bottom left corner, you can see that that number starts to come down. So you can actually see that slope coming down and then it normalizes back down to a lower pressure. And this is super, super cool that we can we were able to capture this with that test because it lets us see really, really well this idea that we have to think about how well we can send blood from the heart to the head. And is it getting constricted anywhere along the way? When we do a tilt table in this case, we actually saw that there was a decrease in blood flow 40% even in that already low number. So super, super big deal. You can imagine somebody having migraines. You can imagine that they're going to have POTS. Why? Because they can't push blood into their head. They're going to have to push it harder in order to try to make that happen. And then we're having all these GI complaints where, you know, the sensitivities to foods are just bonkers. You're sensitive to everything. And this gives us a window into understanding a little bit of why when we can't irrigate our brain, when we can't send blood there, we see this downstream effect affecting that whole autonomic output, trying to like back up and solve this problem. So um, really cool. Looking forward to to seeing the resolution of this. We're working on that right now. If you have questions about that, if you're curious about it, send us a note, but I hope it helps. Take care.